Okay, let's talk about the most confusing part of agent kit. And that's how OpenAI defines an agent. If you look at this, it should remind you of something. And that should be this. You have multiple LLM calls that are chained together through some sort of conditional logic gate. And this is what the industry has started calling workflows. But now for some reason, OpenAI is calling this an agent builder. And if we go back and look at the new definition of an agent from OpenAI is an a AI agent is a system that can do work independently on behalf of the user. It's extremely vague and I think it's on purpose. Here is the definition from Anthropic. So they say agents are systems where LLMs dynamically direct their own processes and tool usage, maintaining control over how they can accomplish tasks. Now, going back to this, it's actually a well-defined declarative graph where you as a user or developer have to define every step that the agent has to take and then set of tools that are going to be available, but the whole flow is predefined. Now, this is what Anthropic and all of the industry are calling workflows. So they are a system where LLMs and tools are orchestrated through predefined code paths. Now, definition matters. And if you read through their blog post, it's extremely confusing. So for example, they're saying design workflows with Agent Builder. Now, here's the kicker. A few months ago, OpenAI released this, a practical guide to building agents. Now, in this, they had this to say about declarative and non-declarative graphs. So they said some frameworks are declarative. At this point, they were most probably pointing towards lang graph. Now in here say, requiring developers to explicitly define every branch loop and conditional in the workflow upfront through graphs consisting of nodes, which are agents and edges, deterministic or dynamic handoff. While beneficial for visual clarity, this approach can quickly become cumbersome and challenging as workflows grow more dynamic and complex, often necessitating the learning of specialized domain-specific languages. Now, if you look at this, this is exactly what OpenAI is trying to do with their new agent builder. Now, don't get me wrong, it has a lot of useful cases, and I actually personally really like their implementation. But I also agree with what they are saying in here. Now, then they go on to say, in contrast, the agent SDK adopts a more flexible code first approach. Developers can directly express workflow logic using familiar programming constructs without needing to predefine the entire graph of print, enabling more dynamic and adoptable agent orchestration. So with this, you can actually go and generate code and it's using the agent SDK in the backend. But again, you are defining workflows, not building agents. And at this point, it, it is probably helpful to understand what exactly a workflow is. So if you, if you look at your current workflow in terms of how you solve problem, you could potentially translate that into a declarative decision graph and express those actions with the help of an LLM such as like this, the LLM can take decision at different points based on the available tools, but you as a user define what those actions and conditions are going to look like. In, in my humble opinion, in most business applications, that's exactly what you want to do. There are different types of workflows that you can put together. And if you read through Anthropic's blog post, they have six or di seven different configurations where they explain how these workflows can uh, be put together to solve specific problems. Now, agents, on the other hand, have the ability to plan, take actions, and modify their plan based on the feedback that they get from the environment or the results of those actions. So here's a quick example of what those actions and the results could look like. So let's say you have a number of different tools that are available to the model. Select, the model can select a specific tool based on its needs that is going to go to the context of the model. Then the model takes action. The tool call generates the results that goes to the history of the model. And then based on those observations, the LLM can 
update its plan and take more actions. So there is a lot more flexibility in autonomous agents. And we have seen a very interesting response to OpenAI's workflow builder or agent builder. So here's a very interesting blog post from Harrison Chase, who is the CEO of Langchain. And I think it, it, in this, he highlights a few issues with visual workflow builders. So first of all, they are not low barrier to entry. So he argued that despite being built for mass audience, it is still not easy for average non-technical user to use them, which kind of goes back to the point that OpenAI was making a few months ago. And the second point that he highlights is complex tasks quickly become too complicated to manage in Visual Builder, which again is a valid criticism of Visual Builders. Now in here, he is making a case for Lang graph, right? So take it with a grain of salt, but time will turn. One thing which I also want to highlight is that some people think that Agent Builder will probably kill a number of different Visual Builders, which I don't think is the case. Specifically, people talk about tools like Zapier, Make, N8N, right? But if you look at some of the MCPs, they actually have support for Zapier, which makes it extremely powerful because it enables the connectors or integrations Zapier has that you can actually bring into OpenAI's agent builder or agent kit. Now, since everything is through an MCP, you can theoretically bring in a lot more than the current list that they have. But time will tell how effective this new agent kit is going to be. I personally think that although it is advertised to developers, probably it's not specifically for developers. Developers probably want a lot more control than a visual builder. Now, time will tell because they also have pretty neat features in terms of you, you can build evolves and the integration seems to be pretty smooth. However, keep in mind, if you're using OpenAI agent kit, it has very strong vendor lock-in. And that means since it's an OpenAI product, you are limited to OpenAI models. But since it has support for MCPs, you can theoretically bring in other models, although they were not going to be driving uh, the overall flow or structure. But I think since it's built on top of Agents SDK, there might be a way around it that you build a workflow here, test it, and then potentially replace the models with other models. We'll have to test whether that is going to work or not. Anyways, do let me know what you think about agent kit and agents in general. How do you see the difference between workflows and autonomous agents? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Anyways, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. And as always, see you in the next one.